Early this morning, I received great news from Nashville in the United States that my daughter-in-law gave birth to her third child, George Robert Merle. He's a brand new baby and he has a two and a half year old brother and a five year old sister. And when you think about a newborn baby uh, and compare that newborn baby to older siblings, to cousins, to uncles, to aunts, to parents, to grandparents, there is a massive maturity difference. When a baby is born, it starts a lifelong process of maturity. Uh, we want to talk about this idea today at Discipleship 2019, this idea of maturity. We're going to look at a scripture that tells us how important spiritual maturity is in the Christian life. And we're also going to look at the means toward maturity. How can I, wherever I am in my spiritual journey, what is it that becomes a catalyst for me to become everything God has called me to become. What is the thing or the, the, the convergence of events that causes maturity to happen in our spiritual lives? Do you ever feel as a victory group leader or as a victory group leader intern that maybe the ministry context and the ministry opportunity is a little bit beyond you? Uh, I don't know about you, but I feel like that almost every day of my life. I can't think of any ministry situation or leadership situation I have found myself in that I ever felt ready for. It seems like every single time I felt inadequate, I felt ill-equipped, I felt I wasn't mature enough. I felt like I didn't really totally know what I was doing or wasn't totally fully confident that I could actually do what that opportunity called for. I think most people who do ministry feel that way, at least from time to time. Some people almost all the time. So I want to look at a scripture today that's going to hopefully bring it all uh, in context for us. Ephesians chapter 4, we're going to read three verses. Ephesians 4, uh, verse 11, 12, and 13. Here's what the Apostle Paul says. And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. And Paul goes on to write how the result is we don't act like children anymore, tossed back and forth like a small boat on waves. And he says that those waves are like doctrines that come and go and new ideas, new doctrines. We're not tossed anymore. We're not children. We become mature. And uh, that's our goal. That's what we hope that today, and uh, not just today, but the discipleship process that you're involved in, this great discipleship journey, brings us toward maturity. Now, if you don't feel quite ready to lead in the way that you're being asked to lead, or you don't really feel up to the opportunity, I want you to know today it's not just a feeling. It's probably reality. You're probably not ready, but it shouldn't stop you. Um, if we stopped at every ministry opportunity that we didn't feel fully ready for, we probably wouldn't ever really do anything. Now, to get the confidence to allow God to use us in new and fresh ways, it starts with basic counting, learning how to count. I don't know how you count. Uh, last summer, I was at the swimming pool with my granddaughter, and she was four years old at the time. And it was time to get her out of the pool and go to dinner. So I said, Josephine, five more minutes and we have to leave. She loves to swim, she loves the pool, and she loves to negotiate. So she said, Pops, not five minutes, four more minutes. And I said, no, we need to go in five more minutes. And the tough negotiator that she is, she goes, no, no, three more minutes. And I said, no, we need to go in five more minutes and we have to go eat. And then she goes, two more minutes? I said, okay, two more minutes. 
and then I watch my clock. And of course, you can do that with a four-year-old, but sometimes we as adults, especially as believers, as disciples of Christ, we don't count any better than my granddaughter, for instance. When we look at this scripture that we're reading, Ephesians 4, verses 11, 12, and 13, verse 11 lists what I like to call the mentors. And what he says, Paul says, God gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, shepherds, and teachers. These are the mentors. These are the ones who are to mentor us spiritually. Um, your pastor, your teacher, your prophet, your, these evangelists, these people listed here. Their job is not to meet all of our needs. Their job, it says, is to equip and to train. So what we have in verse 11 are the mentors. In verse 12, it says that these mentors do what? Verse 12, to equip the saints for the work of ministry. So the mentors equip or train or prepare saints. Those aren't uh, dead people who are really good. Saint in scripture is a believer, a Christian, a disciple. And so these mentors, verse 11, equip, verse 12, the saints to do ministry. So who are the ministers? Is it the pastor or is it the people? The scripture here tells us what Paul is saying is the pastor is the mentor. The people are the ministers. And so we have verse 11, the mentor, verse 12, the ministers. And then look what happens in verse 13. It says, this happens until we reach unity in the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature. He doesn't just say mature. He says, we grow to this mature manhood. Then he says, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Now that's a pretty high bar of maturity. Mature to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm not quite there yet. Uh, I actually don't think I'll be there until way into eternity, but that's the maturity process and the standard. So, a lot of us think that in order to do ministry, we have to first be mature. We have to measure up to something. We have to have reached this sort of spiritual nirvana where we're some type of spiritual savant or spiritual guru. And when we reach this um, vague ethereal level, then God could use us. We don't really know what that level is. We don't have any way to measure that. We don't have any like finish line we cross, but we always think somewhere out there is this place of maturity and we're just not quite there yet. I feel like that often myself. But let's think about this. Verse 11, the mentors. Verse 12, the ministers. Verse 13, maturity. The way most of us think, we count like this. 11, 13, 12. What we think in our minds as Christians too often is that God gave, verse 11, mentors, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, mentors. And then we skip verse 12 and the mentors produce verse 13, which is maturity. Then once we're mature, we don't know what that is exactly, but once we're mature, then we can do verse 12, which is ministry. That's not what the scripture says. It's not what the Apostle Paul said. That's how my four-year-old daughter counted, but that's not how Scripture is. It's not 1, 3, 2. It's not 11, 13, 12. No. It's 1, 2, 3, 11, 12, 13. So what's the order here of this thing? It's mentors produce ministers, and as those ministers do ministry, people like you and I, the person sitting next to you, the person sitting behind you, the person sitting in front of you, the intern who might start leading a victory group soon, but is certainly not very mature. You know how you achieve maturity? Verse 11, mentors produce, verse 12, people like us who are ministering. And as we do ministry, then verse 13 happens, maturity. So how does maturity happen? Ministry produces maturity. The more we minister, the more we mature. Think about the first time you ever did a Bible study. I think about it. I was a teenager. I was a relatively new Christian. 
and I got an opportunity to lead a Bible study and I studied and I studied and I prayed and I repented and I cried out to God. And I don't know if anybody learned anything. I don't know if it helped anyone in that Bible study, but you know what happened? I matured. I grew because I ministered. Hopefully it helped those people or at least didn't do much damage, but it certainly helped me. And I think all of you could testify that the more you do ministry, the more you mature. There are a lot of people sitting around waiting for maturity to happen and they think I need more knowledge, I need another course, I need more training, I need some kind of magical thing to happen. But what needs to happen for maturity to take root in our lives spiritually is that we start pouring out and ministering to others. The more we minister to others, the more we mature. So mentors produce ministers, that's us. And as we minister, we start seeing maturity in our own lives. So listen, don't wait until you think you're mature enough. Start ministering. Looking at the people in your victory group, don't look at them and think they're not mature enough. Oh, they could never do what they need some other thing. No, 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 no. Let them minister, encourage them, empower them, and let's see what God will do in their lives. Now, I told you how my granddaughter counts. She's learning now. She's getting smarter. She's, I, I can't really trick her that way anymore, although she kind of tricked herself. And I think as we grow up, we learn to count properly. And I want to end with this thought. The context of this, everything we've said from Ephesians 4, 11, 12, 13, about the mentors, about the ministers, about maturity, everything we've said has a reason. The reason for this meeting right here, the reason we're gathered together all over Metro Manila and all over the Philippines and even in other nations right now, all together, the reason, there's a reason. It's not so our church will get bigger. It's not so that we can prove to somebody else that we're successful. The context of what Paul writes is clearly laid out in verse 1 of chapter 4. Here's what he says. I therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling you've received. He goes on to explain that walking in a manner worthy of the Lord in the context of Christian character, of humility and love and kindness and graciousness. Well, listen, why are we doing this? Why are we taking this moment to talk about equipping people to do ministry so they'll bring, have maturity? So that every one of us will walk in a manner worthy of the Lord. Letting our gifting and ministry opportunities sit still and not make progress and not have impact, waiting in insecurity isn't walking in a manner worthy of the Lord embracing the mentors God gives us, starting to do ministry even though we feel insecure about it, seeing that maturity that results, that is what it means to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord. We want to do everything we can in this church for every single person who's a part of this movement to help everyone and give the opportunities to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord. He's worthy of our lives. He's worthy of our hearts. He's worthy of our minds. He's worthy of everything we do. And so let's step out in faith and walk in a manner worthy of Him.